Howdy folks, Matthew with River Ponics. Today is July 22nd, 2022. It is the evening time, about 7.30. Sun's going down. Thought I'd do an update on the garden. And I will show you the Bokashi compost tea and uh, what's going on with that. <clears throat> I'll start with that first. So this is the Bokashi bucket. It's where you put um, your food scraps, like all the stuff I pick off this garden in here, you know, leaves and you know the whole nine yards, it all everything goes in here and gets recycled. So it's kind of like plant cannibalism and feeding the plant matter back to the plants. Um, and as you can see, within the last week and a half, everything has probably doubled or tripled in size. It's quite amazing. I'll do a tour here in a minute. But anyway, so the Bokashi bucket is a dual. There's two buckets stacked into one. The bottom bucket has the uh, spigot. This is where you would put all your plant material, food scraps. And there's a bunch of holes drilled on the bottom side of this, which I can show you, maybe. And it's really hard to see. There's a patch kit I made, but there's little whole eighth inch holes in the bottom of that. And then down there is where all the residuals will go, which I recently just poured out into here. And this is the, uh, the nutrients. Now this is highly concentrated, so typically you would dilute this down with water you know per gallon but in this case I'm moving oh I don't even know I'd have to add it up probably probably close to about 75 gallons of water through this whole system altogether somewhere around there probably I have look, one two three four five six grow channels 12 foot long in the brewer in the reservoir so you add all that up probably about 75 gallons somewhere around there so I'm just going to pour this in there and right into the brewer and it will dispense itself throughout the growth system and recycle on a continuous basis. This is the magic right here, the motor horse. Um, it only runs on uh, less than 60 watts to run this entire garden I got going on here. Tomato plants are just looking absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. So what I'm doing here is combining soil gardening with hydroponics. I have different size grow channels. These are the deeper ones that I use. These are four inch in depth. And then I have smaller ones that are two inches right here. So I have two different types. Obviously stuff like you know your smaller grow channels are for your smaller plants that aren't so root bound. And then obviously this is your all-purpose kind of grow channel here. We'll do everything. Big plants, small plants, whatever you want. Uh, very versatile. Uh, you can grow hydroponically in here too. All these lids you see right here are, are all removable. You can drill holes in them for your little nut cups if you wanted to go completely uh, hydroponic. Um, a lot of different techniques you could do. But I'll just kind of do a walk around here basil absolutely just blows up in this grow system self-watering once you get everything planted you just really just uh, it's hands off then at that point other than just maintaining doing your basic routine stuff you know but it's really convenient super nice um, you grow some beautiful kale plants everything just I've been doing this for seven years or more and uh, and had nothing but success so this tomato plant here is just absolutely blowing up I'm gonna have to cage it up even higher cucumbers are trellising need picked there's a few of them on there but doing really well and it's only in about three gallons of soil it's a four gallon pot there but it's not even filled up all the way so there's Nice one growing into the fence. Yeah, some nice sized cucumbers and then I have watermelons going on this year. And I got quite a few of them actually hanging. There's uh, one right there. There's a nice one there. 
And that one, just give you a size comparison, it's the biggest palm of my hand right now. One there, one down there. There's a little one there. There's one right there. There's one. I got a lot of watermelon this year. Come on, there's one up there, even two right there. So, so what you would do with this, once it gets bigger, to support the weight, you just use pantyhose, and I would tie pantyhose to this, to the trellis there, and like a hammock. So the watermelon will sit like a hammock in the pantyhose. So that's how you support that. Um, yeah, you can see all the tomatoes coming in here. Some romaines. Tomatoes just looking beautiful this year. Everything's looking really good this year. Um, come back around. So I can use different size containers too. <clears throat> Typically the four gallons perfect size. Right here, I like the square, and they fit right up real nice on the grow channel, so pretty ideal. Um, but you can, you know, this is like a 17 gallon. You could do this for more if you want to get real massive big plants. And then this is 27 gallon, and I have kale growing. I have the watermelon planted in here, and then I have uh, pepper plants. Same thing over here with this one same exact thing so and uh, but that's a lot of weight right there I would recommend actually using the bigger grow channels like that and make sure you have good support underneath because that's a tremendous amount of weight especially when the soil is saturated and wet um, yeah let's see the last video I talked about you know why I call it river ponics and this being outdoors, um, we've had some real torrential rains and it just get, gets exposed to all the elements. And so when it does rain, um, obviously the rain leaches right through that soil and then down into the grow channel. And I can kind of give you a general idea of what we're dealing with here. There's a net cup under there. And it's amazing, the root's not even down in there yet. This all depends on the plant. Another one, but um, yeah, so the rain leaches down through the soil, and so now you're taking all the minerals and nutrients in the soil and you're dispensing it into your system, into the water. So then it circulates and then it literally turns the water brown like a river. So that's where the whole concept of river, river ponics comes from, um, and obviously it works really well it's a great alternative to save on nutrients because you're you know when you're first starting these plants you're relying on the soil and that's exactly what happens is the plant is living in the soil and being self-watered but over time as the root mass grows they will get into the grow channel and I can show you an example of that I know this one has roots down in the grow channel um, and you can see right there, there's a mass of roots, and I'm not gonna pull that up any more than that. But cucumbers, yeah, definitely have a pretty vigorous root mass. Um, but yeah, so once the roots get down in the grow channels, then you know it's time to actually start applying nutrients into your brewer to help uh, compensate for any nutrient loss that you're not getting from the soil at that point but um, yeah but it saves you can't tell you I mean I, I've had this now for two months and really I just really just initially started um, applying nutrients to my brewer just recently I think it was my second application so other than that this is what the plants look like before even really applying any nutrients but it's game on now so, yeah, anyways, man, this is uh, this is kind of the setup. This is it's real simple, nice setup because you got both your, your plumbing on one side. And this is your feed line coming from your brewer all down from the, on the other end. It's your feed line. And then you have your drain going back. 
nothing's attached this stuff's all removable I can pull this right out the um, the drain here I'll just lift it up see what we got going on here let's just look at it so there we go so there's the drain this is how you adjust your water level in your grow channel it's just a little spacer cut that spacer to size and that'll give you your depth of water in your grow channel you can see it's open-ended right here all the way down 12 foot down on the other end it's the same way so this water and fluid can circulate either count well, it's actually uh, counterclockwise in this fashion but it can circulate all the way down through there so that's kind of how this works you can see the roots um, <clears throat> so when you have a plant this close to your drain it's a good idea to pay attention to this here down here on your drain and you can train your roots to not grow down into your grow channel and clog stuff up so that's really the only thing you have to really pay attention to with this system but other than that that's uh it's pretty much foolproof so all right i can't wait to try that watermelon right there have a good day